Welcome to Weather Basics, wind. In this topic, we will look at what causes the wind, what is the jet stream, and examine a few different types of wind. To begin, let's look at what causes wind. Wind develops in response to differences in temperature between air masses. This difference in temperature can also be expressed in terms of density or pressure, and air will flow from a denser air mass, or one of higher pressure, toward a less dense, low pressure air mass. On a weather map, air will flow from high pressure to low pressure. The strength of the pressure systems is represented by lines of constant pressure called isobars. The tighter the isobars, the stronger the winds. Jet streams are fast-flowing, relatively narrow currents of air about 7 miles above the Earth's surface. They form at boundaries of adjacent air masses with significant differences in temperature. They typically exceed 100 miles per hour, but can reach speeds in excess of 200. Jets normally have some curvature to them, unlike the straight line jet currently depicted. This is because the air masses commonly displace each other, moving not only east to west, but north and south. So, if we move these air masses on the image to something more typical in the atmosphere, you'll see how the jet stream becomes curved. In North America, there are two branches of the jet stream that affect the continent. One is the subtropical jet. This jet generally stays across the far south, but can reach up into the southern one-third of the United States. To the north is the polar jet, and it's the jet that influences our weather the most. As the seasons transition from fall to winter, the polar jet usually sinks farther south, allowing for colder air to flow southward. The jet can sink far enough south that freezing temperatures impact the Gulf states. Also, jet streams can serve as steering mechanisms for storm systems, represented by the L on the image. The storm systems will then follow the flow of the jet. Now, let's look at various types of wind. First, land and sea breezes. And we will start by looking at what occurs in the morning. In the morning, the land is generally cooler than the water and small, weak areas of high and low pressure develop. Air flows from the high to the low, so it moves from the land to the water. In response, that air will rise, and then the portion will move back over the land. This completes a circulation and is known as a land breeze. Some clouds can form offshore due to the rising air. Now, let's consider what happens in the afternoon. The land heats up and is now warmer than the water resulting in a weak area of low and high pressure developing in the opposite locations. Air will now flow onshore, rise, and then a portion head back out over the water, completing the circulation. This is called a sea breeze. Clouds commonly form over the land due to the rising air from the sea breeze and can result in some showers and thunderstorms. Next, we turn our attention to upslope and downslope winds. This image depicts two mountains, or areas of higher elevation, with a river valley running between them. First, let's see what happens in the morning. The sun will start to warm the eastern slopes, thus warming the air. The air will want to rise up the slope as a result, leading to an upslope wind. On the western side, the slope remains cool, and the air will want to sink. In the afternoon, the air will continue to move up the eastern slopes and can lead to some cloud formation. Meanwhile, the western slopes have started to warm and the air will start to rise up on these sides. By the evening, both slopes are cooling and the air will want to sink or flow down both slopes. This is called a downslope wind. The downsloping winds continue into the early morning and as a result, a cool to cold pool of air can settle in the valleys. Just above this cool pool, the air is still relatively warm. This results in what is known as a temperature inversion. Basically, cool air is located below warmer air. The wind will now want to travel across above the inversion, leaving very light winds in the valley. If the air is moist enough, these conditions can result in fog formation in the valleys. Now, let's take a look at a couple of named winds, the first being Chinook winds. The name Chinook comes from the name of the people in where the usage first derived. It references a warming wind from the ocean into the interior regions of the Pacific Northwest. In this scenario, winds will push into the western side of a mountain. As it climbs in elevation, the moisture condenses out of the air, 
resulting in some clouds and possibly rain. The air will continue to flow across the top of the mountain with a few more clouds developing, but likely no precipitation. As the air moves down the eastern slopes, it accelerates, dries, and warms. Temperatures can rise considerably due to the Chinook wind, with temperature climbs of 20 to 30 to even 40 degrees fairly common. The greatest 24-hour change on record was from a Chinook wind. It occurred on January 15, 1972 in Loma, Montana, where temperatures rose from 54 degrees below zero to 49 above. That's a 103 degree change. In addition, Chinook winds also can be referred to as snow eaters, as in the winter, these warm, dry winds can quickly melt any snow cover. Let's see if you know what location had the fastest recorded rise in temperature, and it was due to a Chinook wind. Was it Denver, Spearfish, Scotts Bluff, or Casper? Spearfish is the correct answer. On January 22, 1943, the temperature rose from 4 below zero to 45 degrees above zero in only two minutes. We now move on to another named wind, the Santa Ana winds. Santa Ana winds are dry, warm winds that blow into Southern California from the surrounding desert, moving originally off of the Great Basin. On this map, a portion of the Great Basin can be seen here over much of Nevada and western Utah. High pressure develops over this area with the air rotating clockwise around the high. This air is rather cool and dry and will flow across the Mojave Desert to along the front of the Sierra Nevada mountains and channel through canyons over Southern California, Santa Ana being one of those canyons. The air accelerates through these canyons, heating up and drying out even more, resulting in a fast-moving, warm and dry wind. These are the Santa Ana winds. Let's look at some Santa Ana wind trivia. What seasons are the Santa Ana most prevalent? Winter, spring, summer, fall. If you chose winter and fall, you are correct. Santa Ana conditions can exist any time in which the Great Basin tends to be cooler than Southern California, but this typically occurs in September through March. However, the Santa Ana are most dangerous in the fall, as this fast-moving, dry, and hot wind cause vegetation to quickly dry out, increasing the danger for wildfires. If a fire starts, the Santa Anas will quickly spread the fire. How about a little wind trivia? What is the highest recorded surface wind speed? 128 miles per hour, 231, 192, or 277? It's 231. In April of 1934, a wind gust of 231 miles per hour was recorded at the Mount Washington Observatory in New Hampshire. Strong winds are common at Mount Washington. In a typical year, hurricane force winds are experienced on almost one-third of the days. While Mount Washington holds the record for highest recorded wind speed at the surface, the highest measured wind speed was in a tornado. On May 3, 1999, a portable Doppler radar recorded a 318 mile per hour wind within an F5 tornado near Moore, Oklahoma. However, this measurement was at least 100 feet off the surface and therefore is not the official land wind speed record. So what did we learn? Wind develops in response to differences in temperature and thus density between air masses. Air flows from high pressure to low pressure. Jet streams are fast-moving currents of air in the upper atmosphere and typically exceed 100 miles per hour. There are two jet streams that affect North America, the polar jet and the subtropical jet. A land breeze, also known as an offshore flow, is a wind that develops when cooler land mass is near a warm body of water. These typically develop at night. A sea breeze, also referred to as an onshore flow, develops when the land is warmer than the cooler water. This forms during the day. An upslope wind is a wind that develops when air warms along the sides of a hilly or mountainous terrain and then rises up the slopes. This occurs during the day. Downslope winds are the opposite, developing at night as the slopes cool and air wants to flow downhill. Chinook winds reference a warming wind from the ocean into the interior regions of the Pacific Northwest. Winds climb the western side of the mountains, creating clouds and possibly precipitation as they rise. 
They then accelerate, warm, and dry out on the eastern slopes, resulting in some rapid warming. Chinook winds can also be known as snow eaters for their ability to quickly melt snow cover. Santa Ana winds are dry, warm winds that blow into Southern California from the surrounding desert. They tend to form in the fall and winter with a peak in September through March. They are known for increasing wildfire danger as they dry out vegetation then quickly spread any fires that develop. For further information on any of the topics we have discussed, here's a listing of some good resources.